up and let me show you this wars rumors of wars earthquakes global shaking and the rise of anti-semitism and jew hatred across the world are these the end times sean foyt uh here with us now i gotta say sean your mom was with flashpoint this past weekend in virginia <laughs> beach uh, I tried to call her up, but she, evidently this. she left out of the room. But uh, all right. So talk to us about what happened. You were there and uh, you uh, in the in the eye of the storm. Sean Foyt walks through with his guitar. Tell us. Talk to us about what happened. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I was horrified, just like the rest of America, as we're seeing uh, this anti-Semitic. Uh, and Jew hatred being uh, spewed out at uh, a university campus in New York City. And then really that like demonic thing started to catch root uh, across other campuses in America. And so I just said, man, we got to rally people. We need to mobilize. We need to show a different narrative. You know, we can't just hide behind Twitter and Facebook and social media and whine about it. Like we got to rise up. This is a season of activation. And so that's what we did. And we, uh, by God's grace, were able to rally the largest, this is what Jewish leaders are telling me, the largest pro-Israel rally in the history of New York City. And uh, they shut the streets down. NYPD had to come out in full force with several busloads of, of um Policemen, which were very amazing, by the way. And uh, we saw, I think the estimates are four to 5,000 people show up. And uh, it was a sight to behold as we overwhelmed the noise of the protesters shouting, kill Israel, kill the Jews with our God reigns. Yeah. And he's the Amen. one in control. And it was a sound of unity, hope, prayer. It was just really beautiful. Okay, well, I couldn't help but notice a face in the crowd carrying an inflammatory picture of Bonhoeffer. Uh, Eric Metaxas, uh, talk, <laughs> talk about that experience. Well, I, I didn't just end up there. Sean is a, is a friend uh, and he told me, you know, he wanted to do something. And I thought, are you kidding? I'm in. And, and I reached out to everyone I could. Uh, and uh, I said, I'm going to be there. And obviously Sean has a gigantic reach. And so we, we rallied to, to be there. And it's funny because I've been spending a lot of time up in Connecticut with my mom. So I, I drove into the city, got home. I had ordered some Bonhoeffer posters just for this. My wife and I taped cardboard to the back of them. I jumped in a taxi cab and I shot up to Columbia. And so we had three Bonhoeffer posters. Bonhoeffer, to me, he's the ultimate face of Christians standing up for the Jews. Jesus was a Jew. Bonhoeffer understood that when the Jews are being attacked, it's an attack on God. It's attack on God's people. And we need to stand for them. Every single Christian needs to stand up for the Jews being persecuted in our nation. Uh, and look, we have to be clear. There's always a demonic spirit right. behind Jew hate. This is not just some random thing. It's a demonic thing. What we're seeing right now is a demonic, radical, Islamic, uh, jihadi you know, movement. This this is not about, oh, you know, we, we care about the people in Palestine. No, this is this is something that is it's very, very dark. And I, you know, I said, I think I said that night when I spoke to the bullhorn, you know, if you have a cause, you don't behave the way Hamas behaves and a way the way these pro Hamas agitators are behaving. They're not behaving with dignity like Martin Luther King Jr. They're behaving like monsters. Uh, they're, they're doing everything in case you didn't even know anything about it. And you looked at the way they're behaving. You'd say they don't seem like good people to me. No, I, I agree. Uh, talk. Uh, and let me go back to you, Sean. Uh, in, in this experience, you made a statement just a minute ago that uh, the policemen were were very you think you said very kind and you, it was great to work with mm -hmm. Ex talk a little bit more about that what did they do did they talk to you did they give you like a thumbs up or anything explain what you saw there <laughs> Well, they're they're obviously very annoyed because Colombia will not let them take care of business and remove these encampments. I mean, listen, a lot of these police officers are Jewish. Uh, a lot of these guys, they, they cannot stand these whiny, petulant uh, little brats on these campuses that decide that they're going to set up an encampment that a zone that nobody else can go into. And so these police, I mean, they, they were like they were I, I really believe they were on our side. And it was interesting because I talked to the. Uh, one of the chief guys that was there driving up and down the streets. And he told me, he said, listen, Sean, he said, he said, you know, we're going to, people are arrested already are being arrested tonight. Um, and he said, but not on your side, 
we don't have a problem with your guys. You guys are nice. You're singing. You're marching. This is right. This is First Amendment. But that side, yeah, we've taken some of them already off to jail. So, you know, I think it's very easy. Listen, it's the collision of light and darkness. I mean, you're seeing it play out right now. We've read about it in our Bible. We've preached and heard sermons about it. We sing songs about it. We're actually seeing light and darkness Like we're seeing the dichotomy and when those come together, it's very easy to know which side God is on. Yeah, it's so true. Let me let me say this. Um, This weekend, I I heard uh, Gordon Robertson there at CBN make this statement. And and the question was raised. Why is it always come back to why, you know, Hamas comes back. There's another group that comes again, tries to take out the Jews. We got Hitler trying to take out the there's always it's like a cycle. and, And he said, why is that? The answer is. Now get this, the Jews prove the existence of God. Mm. 